Thoracic ultrasound for pneumothorax. Using ultrasound to look for a pneumothorax is one of the easiest ultrasound skills to learn. After watching this instructional video and practicing the technique just a few times, this new skill will change your practice. The benefit of thoracic ultrasound is striking because it can be used quickly to rule out a significant pneumothorax in any critically ill patient. The entire exam can be completed and interpreted in less than one minute. Also, ultrasound is much more sensitive than chest radiography or a physical exam for detecting a pneumothorax. The technique used to evaluate for pneumothorax is simple. Locate the parietal pleura, which lines the inside of the chest cavity, and see if the visceral pleura, covering the outer surface of the lung, is touching it. The parietal pleura is found just beneath the ribs on the chest wall. The parietal pleura is easy to find with ultrasound since it is rather superficial, even in very large patients. Use a transducer with a large footprint, such as a curvilinear abdominal probe or a long vascular probe. The key is to decrease your depth setting to about 5 centimeters so that you are scanning only the chest wall and not deeper structures. Place the transducer on the chest with the marker dot facing the patient's head. This orientation will allow you to identify one or two ribs and identify the parietal pleura immediately underneath the ribs. Once you have obtained this image, you can usually see the most important finding, the sliding sign. If the sliding sign is difficult to appreciate, the transducer should be rotated 90 degrees so that the rib shadows disappear and the pleura can be visualized along the entire length of the image. The sliding sign is the visceral pleura on the lung surface sliding against the parietal pleura on the chest wall, and this finding rules out the possibility of a pneumothorax immediately underneath the transducer. The easiest way to use thoracic ultrasound to evaluate for pneumothorax is to examine a single site on both sides of the chest. It is most practical to do this in about the third or fourth intercostal space anteriorly in the midclavicular line with the patient in the supine position. The sliding sign should be present anywhere on the chest wall, but this location may be best because the pleural surfaces are usually separated anteriorly when a supine patient has a pneumothorax. This is also a good location because it is superior to the heart on the left side. If you look for the sliding sign too close to the heart, you may see the pleura moving with cardiac activity instead of with respirations. Clinicians should be aware that doing the exam in just one location bilaterally decreases the sensitivity of the exam, but a clinically significant pneumothorax should always be identified by this method. An alternative to doing the exam in just one location is to move the probe to several locations on the chest wall. This is especially helpful when no sliding sign is seen and a pneumothorax is suspected. By doing the exam in several locations, you can estimate the size of the pneumothorax and look for the leading edge where the lung is intermittently touching the chest wall. This is called the lung point sign. Finding the lung point sign is helpful because it is only seen when there is a pneumothorax, whereas lack of the sliding sign can be caused by several other conditions, including pleural adhesions, main stem intubation, pulmonary infiltrate or contusion, ARDS, and atelectasis. Since several other conditions can cause lack of sliding, an ultrasound can detect very small pneumothoraces. Physicians often need to make a clinical decision about how to proceed when the sliding sign is absent. In cases where the patient is unstable or in cardiac arrest and has no lung sliding, it is reasonable to immediately decompress the chest and place a chest tube. In cases where the patient is stable and has no lung sliding, it may be best to obtain other imaging before managing a potential pneumothorax. Keep in mind that ultrasound is much more sensitive than a chest radiograph, so don't be surprised when a pneumothorax is detected with ultrasound and not seen on a chest radiograph. Here are three cases where patients were found to have no lung sliding. Each case demonstrates a common clinical scenario in which the physician needs to decide whether to place a chest tube, obtain further imaging, or simply observe the patient. Case 1. This is the case of a 42-year-old woman who was ejected from a vehicle during a high-speed rollover accident. She was hypotensive on arrival and had an obvious head injury. She was orally intubated shortly after arrival and then had a fast ultrasound exam, which included evaluation for pneumothorax. The remainder of her fast exam was unremarkable, 
but she had no long sliding bilaterally. Her chest radiograph showed the endotracheal tube in good position above the carina and clear signs of a left-sided pneumothorax. A left-sided chest tube was immediately placed. The chest radiograph did not show clear right-sided pneumothorax, so despite the patient's continued hypotension and lack of lung sliding on the right, a right-sided chest tube was not immediately placed. This turned out to be a bad decision. A chest CT showed large bilateral pneumothoraces. This case demonstrates that, in unstable patients with no lung sliding, it is best to place a chest tube immediately. Case 2. This is the case of a 23-year-old male who was stabbed in the left upper back with a barbecue fork. He complained only of localized pain at the site of the stab wound. He was not short of breath and had normal vital signs. A fast ultrasound exam was performed, including evaluation of the chest for pneumothorax. The fast exam was unremarkable, except that there was no lung sliding on the left. An upright chest radiograph showed no clear pneumothorax. There was confusion about whether to obtain further imaging or just observe the patient. A more extensive thoracic ultrasound exam was then performed with the patient in the supine position. Imaging at several locations on the anterior chest revealed no sliding. Imaging was then performed as the transducer was moved into more posterior and inferior locations on the chest wall. Lung sliding was only present inferior to the nipple line and posterior to the mid-axillary line. These findings are consistent with a moderate-sized pneumothorax, so a CT scan of the chest was ordered. The CT scan showed a moderate-sized left pneumothorax and no significant injury. A left-sided chest tube was placed and the patient was admitted to the trauma service. This case demonstrates that thoracic ultrasound is much more sensitive than chest radiography for detecting pneumothoraces. It also demonstrates that thoracic ultrasound can be used to accurately estimate the size of a pneumothorax by essentially mapping the chest wall to determine where sliding is present and where it is absent. Case 3. This is the case of a 45-year-old male who fell down several stairs and complained of left-sided chest and flank pain. His vital signs were stable and he had left upper quadrant abdominal tenderness and left lower lateral chest wall tenderness on physical exam. A fast ultrasound was performed, including evaluation of the chest for pneumothorax. The fast exam was unremarkable except for a lack of lung sliding on the left. A chest radiograph showed no signs of pneumothorax. The patient remained stable but continued to have abdominal tenderness, so a CT scan of the chest and abdomen was ordered. The abdominal CT was unremarkable and the chest CT showed a very small left pneumothorax. The patient was admitted to the hospital and observed overnight. A chest radiograph was repeated the following day and continued to show no signs of a pneumothorax. The patient was discharged from the hospital and had an uneventful recovery. This case demonstrates that thoracic ultrasound is very sensitive for diagnosing pneumothorax. It is common to identify small pneumothoraces which cannot be identified by plain radiography and may not necessarily require treatment. Simple observation or a chest CT scan are both reasonable in such cases. It is important to be aware of even the smallest pneumothorax in patients who require positive pressure ventilation and those who will need aeromedical transport. In summary, remember that thoracic ultrasound is much more sensitive than physical exam or plain radiography for detecting pneumothoraces. Finding a normal sliding lung essentially rules out a significant pneumothorax. Thoracic ultrasound to evaluate for pneumothorax should be part of the FAST exam in trauma patients and should be performed on any patient who is critically ill and may have a pneumothorax. Looking for occult pneumothorax is especially important in patients who are in cardiac arrest, those receiving positive pressure ventilation, and those who will need aeromedical transport. Yeah.